Hello YouTube world, Mac Daddy 19 Love Made One here with the Shade Tree Survivals. Um, this video here is going to be on sh shadows and shading. Um, I'm still learning myself, but I'm dedicating this to flat man and ribbon. Just, just, <laughs> it's for Uncle Fester, his son, and that's their nicknames for each other. Uh, so anywho i will leave that up to him and uh, he can maybe tell you guys that story if he ever gets his iphone uh <laughs> to work with uh youtube and can upload a video but this will be uh working on the uh, douglas dc3 which first flew december the 17th 1935 so uh good ways back but anywho um that's what the this is the photograph i'm going to be working from it's in a book I've got called uh, Chronicle of Fl Flight. And uh, my tongue is getting tied up this morning. But there you go. That's the photo we we're working from. And I will stop the camera and uh, get started drawing. Okay, Flat Man and Mr. Ribbon. This is a Douglas... DC3 I've been working on, I've, I've, I've drawn it out, and now I'm going to do the shadows and shading. I've already started preliminary work, but once you got your picture drawn, and this is an original 1935 model, it's only got uh, two blades on the propeller on each side, so that's um, something to take into account, but anywho, got everything laid out pretty much how I want it, and this light line right here it actually dips down this is part of the shadow and then there's another light line it runs right across here and then uh, across the nose and then right in here these are all going to be areas that we're on a shadow but let's start out with areas that are really dark and in this particular photograph there's only one or two places and that's under the engine cowling here the uh, front main landing gear and then under the rear of the wing here and so what we're going to do, we're going to draw a line down. And this is where the rear wing is throwing its shadow upon the uh, side of fuselage. All right, we've got that. Let me see. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. And really the only other place would be right in here. And... We've got a shadow here, a shadow, a darker shadow here, and then um, the wheel, of course, is black, the tire, but it is in the shadow because the sun is above the aircraft and the wing itself is throwing a shadow across it. Now we've got a highlighted area here where it's bright in the photograph. And then right right there in this area here is very, very bright. And then there's a bright area right here. A bright area right in that very corner that I'm going to have to erase because it's in bad shape. It's darkened in. It does not need to be. Don't be afraid to erase. Okay, so that's really bright right there. It's on the tail area right here, it's very bright, but it's got a distinctive line. The way the, uh, you just use really, really light strokes of your pencil to do this. It's sort of shadowed down. That's the thing, you look at the picture. And it will tell you, I mean, it'll it'll show you, if you just look at it really closely, it'll show you where these shadows are at. And this in here has got like a shadow that comes down. And then it curves around. And this, is, this aircraft was not painted. It was just bare metal. 
So those are the ones, that one there is just, you know, basically a silver aircraft. And we don't have, which I guess I could find a silver pencil, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just lightly, lightly shadow it in. And basically what that is, is the reflection of the sky on that bare metal. And right in here is really shiny. And the top of the wing is reflecting the sky also, so we need a little bit of a shadow, a darker shadow right in here. This is where the aircraft is molded to fit the shape of the wing. And then just really, really lightly, we're going to go over all of this. Now that's some type of window right there, that little round circle here. And we're going to get it really, really light. Same thing on top of this wing. That's the rear wing. That's what, when you uh, work the controls, raises and lowers the aircraft. Now you want a slight line at the very edge, like right in here. You want to leave a little bit of a line there where it's, there's no shadow. And that's going to be really bright. And the rest of it's going to be really dark. Or darker. And it'll do just like that. So now we'll fill that in. And you can make it in straight lines like this here. What they call cross hatching. Your dad can teach you a lot more about that. He is he's he's got to where he's pretty dang good at that. I'm not gonna cross hatch it, I'm gonna do it the way I normally do it. Very, very light pressure on your pencil. Or if you uh, heavy handed like me, you can get different pencils with different darknesses of uh, the uh, what we call the pencil lead, but it's, it's really actually graphite. And some of them are made out of charcoal. So this is a silver skin aircraft. It's actually aluminum. So we're going to use this light gray pencil. Okay, now this is not an actual line on the photograph. This is where the the body or the wing rolls into the body and they're connected and it's sort of a dip like this. Sort of like this right here. Like this right here, this curve. And it's darker right in here. So, and I got, got my pencil a little bit off because it's flattening out and moving into the body and you want to darken that in a little more add just a little more pressure to your pencil and right in here is where it, it dips down into the the body of the aircraft and the wing meld together and then it gets light again and right here I need to darken this section here and this is where the the wing there's a protrusion on it for the uh, where the engine mounts to it and there is a distinct line here where the outer section of the wing meets the the uh, wing root, I guess you'd call it, where the cowling and all is at for the engine. And these old gasoline-powered prop engines, um, I'm gonna have to go in there and fix that because I just noticed that engine is actually beyond the prop. And that's the thing, sometimes you gotta erase a couple times to get it right. I'll fix that here in a little bit. Let's finish up with the shading and the shadowing. Um, there's a really bright streak right in here and I've closed it in just a little too much. So I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm going to gently erase some of that out of there and then go back and add what I need to. And that's just where the reflection is. So here we go. 
like that right there. And there's sort of a spot of it where it's really bright. So I'm just sort of highlight it and go around it and highlight it right there. I need to zoom in a little bit so maybe you can see that. Okay, I'm trying to get the camera to cooperate. You see how I sort of surrounded it? Well, there's a really bright spot right there in that area, so I just surrounded it with a little bit of shadowing. And then we've got a really bright spot up here, so we're going to sort of surround it. And then there's a big old bright spot right in here. And then there's this big bright spot here. We're just sort of going to go around it to give it a highlight. And then the rest of it, we got a bright spot here and another bright spot here. And so what we'll do is just gently shade around that very gently. And you see that bright spot there. And I I try to run the pencil. Oop, oop, oop. See? Uh, there's a bright spot right here and almost colored right over it. So we'll erase that a little bit. Round that cowling off. Go ahead and go around that bright spot. And I'm trying to run the pencil so it's not it's sort of in line with the, the drawing itself. And I've got a little bit of a dark spot right in there. And then it's light again. And right here in this area, we got another bright spot. So we're going to color around it. And remember, this is supposed to be bright because it's in the photograph. It's really, really a good shine off of it. And you can go as slow or fast with this as you want. And the rest of the wing, now this is black on purpose here and here. And I've actually got to go back and put it right there. And under this section of the body right here, it's a couple of shades darker. And what I did is I darkened it up here and here, the very bottom of this. And then the tire really good. And I, I, the camera didn't catch it because I, I didn't notice. I would forgot I would had it so much. But right in here, you got the wing is round. So it's, it's sort of curving up and then flattening out. Remember, the top of a wing is curved. Um, the airflow, because it's curved a little bit, it takes longer for the airflow to go over the top of the wing. And that's what creates lift. Now this is a landing light, so we're going to keep it blank and bare. You sort of want your lines to go in the direction. I mean, if it's got a curve in it, you want it to curve. So it just, it helps the picture out a lot. Because you're going to see the lines in there. Just slow but surely and right around the edges you just slow your pencil down a little bit and work with it. Let's see how that's that's gonna be beautiful right there. That is gonna be beautiful. Gently run along the edge of that line. That's one of my ways of doing things. I just run it real light across in parallel with the lines that are there, the hard lines, and it makes it easier for you to stop your pencil without it getting to look so bad. Uh, you don't have to be in a hurry. Just take your time. Gently like that. And it's darker under here. And as a matter of fact, up on the front, it's quite a bit darker ahead of the engines. Now 
Now this is the uh, intake. I don't think this engine had a supercharger yet. Back in the day, but anywho, we need to darken it in just a touch more here. And right on up through the sides. I want to darken it up some more. I'm not going to go crazy with it. And okay, the plane will come, the nose is coming around like this here. You know, it's curving around. So you want your lines to curve. Whoops. Sort of curve it around like this. Yeah, Douglas DC-3. When it was manufactured, it was a revolution. It beat out Boeing's designs and it beat out a lot of other designs. Now for whatever reason, right in here, it's a little darker. So we're going to darken that up a little bit. Just very, very gentle pressure on the pencil. Just darken it up a little bit. All right, and this other wing. I'll do the same thing. Well, let me do this. And because I buggered up and went outside the line a little bit, let me erase that. Some people can do this just like that. I am not one of those people. It takes a lot of trial and error sometimes for me to get her done. You see how shiny this is? Well, you cannot see it. Let's see if we can get a reflection going on. See how shiny that is? The aircraft skin looks like that. So getting the shadows right, a little bit of a pain in the neck, but not too bad. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Before I go too crazy, oh, too late, I'm already crazy. Let us do that right there so it's easier to stop our pencil. Tell you another good way of doing it. But you can use a ruler for this. Run your ruler right there on that leading edge of that line. And then you can stop your pencil right against it like that. I use my fingers often if it's on the edge of the, the paper. Just like that right there. Your dad probably can teach you a whole lot of what I'm showing you. And he may be more interested in that than I am. And that windscreen was humongous. I do not see a divider on it, on that picture. But yeah, let me see. It pretty much actually went down all the way to the end of the nose there. See, knock that right out. And the blades on the props are steel, and they're very shiny. 
So I just sort of made a, a light outline. Now I'm gonna go back and erase so that it shows up really shiny. And then I'll go back and add some line, darken the lines up so you can see the outline I'm pretty good. Next thing is, like my brother always says, have fun with it. Don't don't stress over it. Just have fun with it. And uh, he is right on the money on that particular score. See, my blade is all monkeyed up over here on this side. It's coming out at the correct angle, but I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do it like this. You gotta remember they're turning. This, this baby's in flight and they're turning and trying to make it look nice is a bit of a pain in the neck and you don't see the bottom of it beyond these antennas at the bottom here so i'm not going to add that but there you go you know that's uh that's uh way you can do it and uh, because i rub my hand across the paper it's getting a lot of you know, the uh, gets onto your hand and gets onto the uh, the paper and so forth. And before we are done, okay, let me uh, add some more back here at the rear. This is known as the vertical stabilizer, and this piece here, it's it, we're inside these lines. That is your rudder, and that's how you make the aircraft turn left or right along with the uh the other controls on your other control surfaces on your wings that's one of the ways that they, you can turn it left or right Like I said earlier, you got a really bright streak here, and you got a bright streak here. Now, the next thing we need to do is take that little bit off and uh, to brighten it up. And that's the problem. I don't have a really accurate um, small eraser, so this is a little difficult. And I will wind up having to go back and... Uh, fix my lines but it's okay I mean it's a work in progress it is a work in progress never be afraid to erase if you have to that's just the way it ball bounces let me see I don't have a really sharp pencil anymore I've already Worn them down, but you want a very distinctive line. Trying to do a technical drawing like this freehand can be a pain in the neck, but it's okay. And this is not a, a definitive line where the metal, it's like the metal is molded together right there. So I'm gonna just use that as a, as a shadow light. But anywho, Let me see if we can get the darn picture in the uh, camera's viewfinder.
That is a Douglas DC-3. And this is for Flatman and Robin. <laughs> Uncle Fester and Fester Jr. But they, he said to use the nicknames Flatman and Robin. And like I said, you guys will have to wait on his video to find out why. But that is a 1935 DC-3. It was originally called the Douglas Sleeper Transport. And it uh, had 16 sleeping berths that people could uh, sleep in while it was being flown. And the Douglas DC-3 is one of the absolute most greatest aircraft ever built. Um, in its day, when it premiered, the DC-2 and then the DC-3, they were the aircraft. Um, sort of like the 767, 777 are nowadays. Um, the DC-3 in its day, it was the number one civilian transport aircraft as far as for passengers. Um, just an out freaking standing aircraft. They are still being flown all over the world, even to this day. A lot of them have been updated with turboprop engines. Some of them still have the old piston engines, but they are just, um, they're that damn good. I mean, 1935 to 2018, and they're still flying around kicking butt. But yep, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Um, let me uh, sign my work. Today is the 22nd. My um, handle on Deviant Art, which Uncle Fisher got me into, um, and I'm sitting here trying to think what the damn <laughs> the dang gum thing is. Um, let me see. I think it's 45 ACP Jedi 45 ACP. That's my that's my handle over there. And I'll put my initials. So there you go. That is it. The Douglas DC-3. One of the greatest aircraft ever built. Uh, just simply, absolutely outstanding. Became the C-47 for the uh, U.S. Army Air Corps during World War II. Paratroopers during the Vietnam era. It became the uh, Puff the Magic Dragon uh, gunship that had four, I think it was four, um, mini guns, uh, Gatling guns, and so forth. And it just, it continues to this day to fly and kick butt around the world and do the job. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Douglas 3C3. I have went back and did a lot of work on it since uh, I stopped the video earlier. I recontoured the rear of the uh, aircraft from about here to here and up here on the top. And I moved this, I angled this out a little bit more and angled that a little bit different so it actually looks like it's straight now and it's not catawampus or, or, or screwed up. Um... I added some more detail to the left, or two actually, that would be the right wing, the upper wing in this particular picture. Added some uh, detail to the top of the wing. Recontoured this section here. And took out a little bit of uh, that, and I straightened up all my lines, and pretty much every one of them. And oh my God, it just came out so, so nice. This is probably the best drawing of an airplane I've ever done, and it, it's, uh, I think it's great because the DC-3 is one of my all-time favorite aircraft, period, hands down. Um, just, just an awesome airplane. Awesome airplane. And it, it, this is the thing. There's a, uh, um... TV series Ice Pilots or something of that nature is about a Canadian airline up in the Northwest Territory of Canada that flies east still with the old piston engines, not the turbo props, and they do things that just simply cannot be done by any other aircraft, uh, not easily and not as inexpensively. It's just a beautiful, beautiful plane. But yeah, like I said, I had to redo the tail here and here. 
and then especially from about here all the way back this section I had to move this wing up a little bit and I had to pull that up it was way down here and it's now up here and it just makes it look straight and square and beautiful and it's just an awesome airplane um, uh, flat man ribbon <laughs> hope you guys enjoy it um, and just for you guys out there who are aircraft aficionados and know about the DC-3 this this story is eventually deleted this was the very first aircraft um, the first DC-3 and you know the photograph could be wrong it could actually be a DC-2 because the cockpit windows are awful big um, but that's what it was illustrated as a DC-3 on its maiden flight and it was all um, you know it was the same as this it's bright and shiny there was no paint on it at all it had the tail number and that was it but yeah it came out so so very nice I hope you guys enjoy it just an absolutely outstanding aircraft outstanding period of aviation history and it's one of my top three or four aircraft period it was just a just a absolutely outstanding airplane but then, anywho, um, y'all take care. Thank you very much for watching. Um, this is dedicated to Uncle Fester's uh, little boy. And uh, they're using the uh, nickname Ribbon. And uh, his nickname, his son gave him, is Flat Man. And I'll let him tell you guys about that if he can ever get around to uploading any more videos. His uh, new iPhone is just will not allow him to upload a video for whatever reason but anywho thank you very much for watching this is mac daddy 1911 a1 and uh, we appreciate you guys watching thank you very much